All right, I'm going to walk you through how to make your graph um, for the spectrometry lab. So once you've got your absorbances and concentrations, we need to put those in. Okay, so I'm going to make a column for concentration. Assuming I can spell it right. Um, I'll extend that out a little bit. And then a column for absorbance. And I'll extend that out a little bit there. All right, um, I'm just going to use some data that I have for these concentrations. Make sure they're in molarities, the capital M. So I'm going to type those in. And I want my concentration first, because when I go to make my graph, whichever column is first typically is going to be my x-axis. So I want my concentration on my x-axis and my absorbance on my y-axis. All right, once I've got those typed in, what I can do is I can highlight the two columns. I'm then going to go up to Insert. And now this may look a little different, but what I want is the scatter plot. And I want the scatter plot without lines. Okay, so I'm going to click on Scatter here so I can make my plot. And you can see that's a pretty linear plot there. All right. Um, one thing I'm going to do is let me add in, and I'm going to go up to um, add in some axis titles. So you can either go into Quick Layout, that may be available. Um, you can go into Add Chart Element if it's not, and go to Axis Titles and add those in. Okay, and so my axis title here is Concentration of copper sulfate and the axis title on this one is absorbance okay now I can change my main title I can call it something like um, you know calibration curve for copper sulfate okay all right, the next thing I want to do is I want to left click on one of these, but you see how all of them are highlighted here, all right? Basically, I want to make sure my data is highlighted, then I'm going to right click on it, and that's a right click. I'm going to go to add trend line, okay? Then you'll see over here, I want to do a linear fit. I want to set for this particular one, I want to set the intercept to zero. I want to display my equation on the chart, and I want to display my R squared value on the chart. Okay, and you can see that it put those in place. I'll just move it over just to make it a little bit easier for me to see. Okay. The one thing I then need to note is first off, this R squared value, the closer it is to one, so mine's 0.9988. That means this linear line here, the better fit the data is to that linear line. In other words, the more linear the data is. And you can see it's fairly linear, that's why it's fairly close to one. That's one thing you can talk about in a discussion is if this isn't real close to one or you see data points that are off a little bit, that's gonna throw your end results off. Could make them higher or lower, that's something you need to think about, how that's gonna affect it, okay? The other thing I need I need this equation, y equals the 13.818x, okay? That 13.818 is going to be my slope of my line, all right? Um, so what I can do is I can say, great, over here I'm going to call it a slope, and I'm going to put the 13.818, 
All right. Now let's say I have my unknown absorbances. So um, I'm going to kind of move this out of the way. Um, and let's see, let's do unknown A. And I'll have three absorbances. Okay, so I'm going to have unknown A absorbance and then concentration. All right, and I'm going to make these columns a little bit larger to fit that. Again, I'm going to move this kind of down here out of the way. Um, and then I can have unknown B and absorbance and concentration again. And I can make those bigger. All right. Now I'm just going to highlight those. I'm going to actually bold those so I know those are kind of my titles. Just makes it easier to see. Okay, I'm going to even bold my slope here. All right. All right. So for my unknown absorbance, now your unknown absorbances are going to be different and your concentrations are going to be different. Okay, this is data that I've I've gathered um, from different labs. Okay, but make sure to pay attention to the process. So I'm going to type in my unknown absorbances. So let's say for unknown A, I had um, 0 0.678, 0 0.675, and 0 0.671. Um, okay. To calculate concentrations, what am I going to do? Well, remember, Y in this equation is absorbance. X is my concentration. So if I plug this absorbance value in for y, I can solve for x. So basically taking y, my absorbance, divided by the 13.818 would give me my concentration. Okay. In Excel, I can do the same thing. Now you can do this by hand in your notebook, or you can do it on here. If you do it on in the Excel file, make sure you put the formulas in. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I'm going to have equals and I'm going to take my absorbance which is y okay that's my d3 here and I'm going to divide it by my slope which is the 13.818 right then I can do so then what you'll see here is this value the 0 0.049066 that's the value of my concentration Okay, I can do the same thing here, that divided by my slope and equals that divided by my slope. Okay. Alright, for my unknown absorbances B, I had um, 0 0.285, 0 0.289, and 0 0.2. Um, what was it? Eight, three. Okay. Calculation is still the same. I'm going to take equals my y, which is my absorbance, divided by my slope, which is m. When I do that, that tells me my concentration. So I'm going to do that two more times. Okay. Now what I can do is I can highlight these cells and I know from my absorbances um, you know I should have three sig figs in my concentration so I can right click on those highlight them right click go to format cells I can change it to a number um, with a couple of decimal places or I can also do it as scientific notation with two decimal places because that'll give me three sig figs Right, so I could do it that and you can see all of those changed. I can do that here. Highlight it, right click, format cells, go to scientific, two decimal places, and there we go. All right, if I want to make these look a little neater, I can highlight them. If I go up here, I can center them. Um, I can do the same here, center them. Okay. So these are the concentrations of my unknowns that I want. Now you also want to calculate an average and standard deviation. 
So I'm going to call an average and I'm going to call a standard deviation. Okay. Um, I'm going to highlight both of those, bold them so I know that those are labels. All right. What I'm going to do is then I want to calculate an average in Excel. If I don't know the formula, I can hit equals and then I can click on this little FX thing here, which is insert function. Click on that. I can type in a brief description. I want an average. Click go and it gives me the average function. So I can double left click on it. And then I can choose here to highlight the cells I want to take the average of, which are these cells right here. And you see the formula it fills in? I could have just typed in that formula as well. Okay, but when I hit enter now and click OK, that's the average of those. Okay. For standard deviation. Again, I can go up here to FX, type in standard deviation, have it search for the standard deviation. Okay, now there's a lot of different standard deviations. Let's just go with the basic one here. Okay. Um, you have the S and the P as well, but let's just go with the basic one. Okay, click OK. It's going to want the numbers, so I'm going to click this little box here. Highlight my concentrations again. And then click OK. And now I've got my standard deviation. Now over here, I can type in equals average parentheses and then highlight the numbers. So if I know what the function is, I can type it in. Right? If I look at standard deviation, it's just STDEV. So I can type in equals STDEV parentheses, highlight my concentrations, okay? And there's my standard deviation for my concentrations. Now I can also center these. Um, standard deviations should only really have one significant digit. I'm also going to put these in scientific notation. You don't always have to do that with standard deviations, but because these are so small, I'm going to. Um, but I'm going to put it to zero decimal places. Okay, because it's, well, we could probably put one decimal place in. Um, one to two significant digits for standard deviation is okay. All right, typically, though, you want just the one standard deviation. All right. Okay, so then I would have my average, I would have my standard deviation. Average, standard deviation. This is for A, this is for B. I know that because I've labeled the columns properly and everything looks nice and neat when I do this. All right. When I go to discuss my end results, I want to talk about my average and my standard deviations. Um, we don't have anything to compare to, so we really can't talk too much about accuracy because we don't have the known values for the unknowns to actually do a percent error. We, if we had a percent error, we'd use that to talk about accuracy. We do, however, have a standard deviation. So if the standard deviation is really low, what that means is we have really good precision between our data points here. right? And this is really low, which means, yes, those are precise data points. In other words, they're reproducible. Okay, This one is really low too, so these are reproducible. All right, So we can talk about that with respect to the standard deviation. Okay, So in all of these, when we make our plot, we get an R squared value. We get an equation of the line. The equation aligned we use to calculate our unknown concentrations based upon their absorbances. Um, and that's really all we're going to do. So now you'll want to save this. Um, you can make this bigger if you want. You don't have to make it bigger. Um, you're going to want to print out a copy of the chart. Make sure when you go to print, make sure you've got the graph highlighted. Otherwise, it's going to print the page, not the graph. So make sure the graph is highlighted to print. You're going to want to print a copy to, to put in your notebook um, and then print a copy to turn in as well. All right. Um, depending upon the instructor, you may want to turn in the Excel file and upload the Excel file. You're going to want to do that for my class. 
All right, and that's pretty much it in using the data. 